I've asked uh, Clerk Segrist to call the roll. All right, Trustee Anthony. Present. Trustee Foster, not <coughs> present. Trustee Graham Hudeck. Good evening. Let the record reflect that Clerk Segrist is in attendance. Treasurer Slavens. Good evening. Trustee Snyderman. Hi, everyone. And Supervisor Williams. Good evening. Uh, could we please call for an adoption of the agenda uh, with a couple minor adjustments? Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the agenda as presented with the addition of item GA and GB to appear before item G1 on the general calendar. GA being the consider purchase of property for future trail extension and GB being consider recommendation of township attorney regarding civil litigation. Support. Okay, those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, please state aye. 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 Good motion carries. Uh, we have two uh, minutes to approve uh, for March 30th and or March 13th and March 20th of 2018. Call for a motion, Clerk Seekers. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the minutes for both the March 13th meeting and the March 20th. I'll second. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now it's time in our agenda for non -citizen, or citizens non-agenda items or public comment. If you're here to speak on any item that's not on the board agenda, now would be the time to make those comments. And I know of two individuals who are uh, interested in speaking. Ma'am, if you could please uh, go first. And what we'd ask is um, state your name, if you would, your address for the record. And then also, if you could please limit uh, to three minutes is the request. Yes, please. Good evening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you tonight. I guess I'm a little too close. Mm -hmm. My name is Christine Wofford, and I live at 44006 Applewood in Canton, and we have lived at that address for 32 years. First of all, I'd like to thank the Canton Police Department for the fine work they've done throughout the years, and my talk is actually about one officer. Approximately 8.30 a.m. on December 27th, I departed from my address to head east on Applewood and eventually lead to Palmer Road. The weather was cold. We experienced 20 degrees and below weather for 20 consecutive days. The street was icy and snowy. Many cars were parked on Applewood and Round Table, as it was just after the Christmas holiday. Just prior to my departure, I noticed my tire light on my dashboard was on. I was a little bit concerned. Therefore, I proceeded very cautiously down Applewood and come to find out the tires were bad and needed to be replaced. Upon approaching a three-way stop at Cavalier and Applewood, I was worrying about applying the brakes too hard that I might slide into many of the parked cars. The same at Applewood and Roundtable. That's where I got stopped by Officer McNulty, who said that I ran through the stop sign. I have served on the neighborhood board and am fully aware of people plowing through the stop sign, especially at Applewood and Cavalier, where we have two different school district buses that actually go through that intersection. <coughs> Knowing that I was trying to be very careful and safe, I feel I was unfairly targeted, and by no means did I mean to create an unsafe environment. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much. I don't think there's any response required at this time, but uh, Josh, maybe you and I can discuss further tomorrow. If you, if you make, we'll make time to do that. Um, now, uh, second guest to speak today is uh, Dr. Kadir. Um, now would be the time. And Dr. Kadir, if you could please uh, name an address and then uh, limit to three minutes. Uh, good evening. <clears throat> uh, thank you, uh, Supervisor uh, Pat and all the trustees. It's really an honor for me to be here. And I thank you for taking the time to serve the community and being away from the uh, family. 
I am Dr. Gulam Kadir, and my address is 45724 Tournament Drive in Northville, Michigan. I am a candidate for state senate. I have served Southeast Michigan for 40 years. Thousands of my patients from both sides of the aisle have trusted me with their lives. I am a fiscally responsible business owner. I took a failing business and turned into a reputable psychiatric clinic with over 25,000 visits per year. I'm in here today in front of you because of my education. Without it, I would be working on a farm. Serving people is my passion. Canton is a diverse community with the presence of three top healthcare systems, number of top doctors, variety of businesses, and manufacturing facilities. It has a very well-educated workforce and top schools. This is a mixture, but, uh, this, uh, this mixture is the best formula for the future of the community. Canton has its own problem, <coughs> and that's called the road problem. This is the problem which dragged the economy down. If we want to have full potential of Canton Township, we have to fix our roads. If you choose me to be your senator, this will be my top priority. I will look at how it is financed, how the contracts are awarded, and hold the builders responsible for their work. I thank you for your time. Thank you, doctor. Very good. Is there anybody else who'd like to take uh, public comment? Mr. Miller. Yeah, George Miller. Uh, I'd like to know what the update on the potholes and being patched down Gettys Road all the way to Ridge Road. There's quite a few. Uh, you, they're uh, six inches deep, sometimes a foot by a, a foot wide out by Central Park for years, and I've complained about it, out there by the daycare on Gettys Road. There must be a spot that's uh, six foot by six foot, it drops off three inches, where the contractor possibly made a sewer tap or a water tap. That's never been repaired. Also, over on uh, Lots Road, there's quite a few potholes. I'd like to know why the county is not taking care of them. We, we've paid roads out here out of our township money I, underneath the understanding from time to time. So when it comes time for them to just do general maintenance, they don't even do their job. Maybe Mr. Barone and Mr. Evans, you could invite them and we could ask them that question why these are not being patched out here and it's so bad. Now, Kind of on the agenda and out of the way, but just a couple more things. I see on the agenda, agenda, there's an increase on the water supply line on Michigan Avenue. Those guys bid it for a final cost and they should be held to that. Unless there's some unforeseen problem they have. Next thing is, I'd like to know the protocol from the police department in writing what their protocol is on an anonymous phone calls after three or four. People call anonymous phone calls and they're run all over the township from time to time. And we've had incidents where the cell phone store was being held up in the bank over here. And all of a sudden you have two or three police cars on the other side of town where there's a hold up or something It's very vital need and the officer is trying to hold down the fort, maybe one officer, where half the police department's on the other side of town for an anonymous phone call. I'd like to know when that's going to stop. The protocol needs to be changed. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Is there any additional public comment? Is there any additional public comment? Uh, seeing none, 
Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, payment of the bills. Mr. Supervisor, I make a motion that we pay the bills. Thank you very much. Uh, those in favor of paying the bills this month, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Very good. Item GA. Oh, do we want to do consent calendar first? Uh, please. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got a lot of items tonight, and I want to cover them all. Let's see. Consent calendar. Clerk Segrist, if you could lead us through. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the consent calendar as written. Item C1. The adjustment of term expiration dates for uh, two planning commissioners, and that is commission, newly appointed commissioner Nancy uh, Eggenberger and uh, Chandru Acharya. And I have item C2, reappointments to the Historic District Commission for two commissioners, uh, former clerk Terry Bennett and Catherine Martin. Item C3, Consider approval of waiver of future water and sewer tap fees for four parcels along Gettys and Bar Roads. And then item C4, the appointment to the DDA board of Mr. Stephen Brock. Second. In favor of the consent calendar as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now on to item GA, which is Consider the purchase of property for future trail extension. Mr. Supervisor, I move uh, to authorize uh, the supervisor uh, to negotiate with the seller to finalize a purchase agreement for said parcel on item G8. Um, in terms of a summary, uh, Canton was offered the opportunity to purchase an approximately five acre mm -hmm. parcel adjacent to Flood and Park that would provide direct access to East to Lily Road through a future trail expansion. The Fellows Creek drain runs through the property and thus the parcel cannot be built on. The property was purchased last year at a tax sale and was later found by the purchaser to be un unbuildable. The parcel has no beneficial use other than open space and provides an opportunity to extend Canton's trail system at a very reasonable cost. Um, is there any, because we covered this in closed session, I think it uh, would be appropriate to call for a vote as presented, unless there are any comments. Seeing none, those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item GB, uh, consider recommendation of township attorney regarding civil litigation. Um, Mr. Supervisor, I hereby authorize the township attorney to proceed as directed. Thank you, Diane. Uh, as discussed with the board in closed session, the township attorney is recommending the board authorize legal action with respect to a certain real property within the township. Again, uh, I don't think there'll be any further discussion. Is there any comments, questions? Seeing none. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, now we have, moving on to general calendar, consider, uh, item G1, consider the purchase of two BMW police motorcycles. This will be in the form of two motions. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve waiving the bidding process due to sole source provider and approve the purchase of two BMW 1200 RTP motorcycles for a grant I'm sorry, for a total cost of $57,698.72 from BMW Motorcycles of Southeast Michigan. Got it. Good. Um, the police department is requesting to purchase two BMW 1200 RT-P motorcycles based on the results of Michigan State Police Department's vehicle evaluation and cost comparative study. This comprehensive study cited BMW as the best choice over Harley-Davidson due to performance, safety, cost savings, and the uplifting process. The BMW is the sole source provider of their motorcycle, with the nearest dealership being BMW Motorcycles of Southeast Michigan, located in Plymouth. Their quote for a fully equipped police motorcycle is $28,849.36 per unit. Is there any board questions or comments for Director Meyer? None. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G2. Oh, oh second motion. 
pay for it real quick. Mr. Supervisor, I further move to approve the below recommended amendment to the 2018 police budget to utilize traffic forfeiture funds for this purchase. That would be an increase in appropriations to um, the traffic forfeiture account of $45,699 and a decrease in appropriations to the fund balance account uh, for $45,699. Thank you, Clerk Sears. Second. Those in favor of the second motion as stated, say aye. 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 Motion carries, item G2. Consider adoption of recommendation for municipal services and finance and budget on the 2018 water and sewer rates. Mr. Supervisor, I move to adopt the 2018 water and sewer rate study. Each year, recommendations are prepared by the staff on the proposed water and sewer rates to take effect in May. This year, the recommended increases result in an average decrease of 6.35% on the typical customer's bill. The details behind the recommendations were presented to the board at study session on March 20th, 2018, and a community rate forum was held with the public on March 28th, uh, 2018, for which 16 residents did attend. Are there any board comments or questions? Yes, Stephen. This is cool. <laughs> I like being able to do this. Uh, I think in my first term we kept it flat one year, but I never got to do a decrease. And I actually, from the newspaper article, had two people call me up to thank all of us for being able to, all of us, lower water rates for the fir first time in a long time. So it's great. Very kind to the trustees as well as Tim and, and Wendy, but we also have to acknowledge the folks behind the scenes. Tim, I don't know if you want to name off a few of them, but there are a lot of folks who put a lot of hours into getting us to this point. Right, yeah, and specifically, you know, Bob Belair from Public Works, uh, Sarah Clay, and Deb Janis, uh, both from Finance and Budget Department. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I'm also excited about a decrease um, in the rates. It's been a little while since we've been able to do that, but, um, Wanted to, yeah, congratulate and reiterate the importance of everybody who worked on this, uh, previous boards, the existing staff. Um, what's also important to note is this doesn't, to my knowledge from the study session, uh, it does not factor into uh, savings for, because um, we haven't realized them for, the, for the, the water storage facility yet. So that, that is something positive to look forward to at future rate studies. And additionally, if I'm not mistaken, this is only six months of sewage uh, Six months of factoring, six, you know, half of the year we had transferred over to um, the Ypsilanti uh, sewage. So um, there is potential for um, increased savings. And okay, no, I'm not going to say that, but I will tell oh, yeah. you. Be careful how far you go there. Good job. Good job. And right. um, it's long term, long range planning. It's, it's, it's good to see. And um, one of the reasons I am proud uh, to serve with all of you fantastic people. and who don't all get a lot of credit, so. Good job. Um, I, just, I just want to thank you also, um, uh, Wendy and Tim and your teams, because this is really great news. I was thinking it would be flat and not uh, lowered, so it's wonderful news for the residents of Canton, so thank you for all your hard work. Mm -hmm. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G... Uh, four, three, there we go, back to three. Uh, consider approval of first reading of Code of Ordinances Amendment to Part 1, Chapter 74, entitled Utilities, Article 2, Division 2, Subdivision 2, entitled Schedule of Rate Charge, Rates and Charges, Section 74.83. Supervisor, I move to introduce and table for consideration the first reading of the Code of Ordinance Amendments to... Um, Part 1, Chapter 74, entitled Utilities, Article 2, Division 2, Subdivision 2, entitled Schedule of Rates and Charges, Section 74-83, with publication on April 20th, 2018, uh, and then removed from the table for second reading on April 17th, 2018, uh, with publication date of April 27th, 2018, and effective date of May 1st, 2018. Okay, and what this does is allows us to formalize the decision we made in the previous item. Um, and the only recommendation I would make to pool owners is wait till May 1st to fill your pool this year. <laughs> that would be a good decision. 
When it starts, stop snowing, right? <laughs> if it stops snowing, well, yes. All right, those in favor of the motion as presented, state aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a second tie to this or no? Nope. Item G4. Consider approval of the site plan for Bickford of Canton Senior Living Facility. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution. Whereas the project sponsor has requested approval of the site plan for Bickford of Canton Senior Living Facility located on the west side of Canton Center Road between Ford and Hanford Roads and whereas the Planning Commission reviewed the site plan and made a recommendation to approve the request as it is consistent with the planned development agreement and standards for site plan approval. Now therefore be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton, Michigan does hereby approve the site plan for the Bickford of Canton Senior Living Facility proposed on the north 3.67 acres at the tax parcel listed subject to any and all applicable state and local development regulations. Support. Good. Uh, I see Mr. Richard Ebby is with us in the audience this evening. If the board has any questions, I know this has been a long time coming getting us to this point, and uh, the board's looked at uh, this project many times in the past. So um, the final plan development was approved on February 27, 2018, by the Township Board of Trustees. The proposed development consists of uh, 40,700 square foot and 64 assisted living units on the 3.67 acre parcel. A uh, one-story building exceeds the masonry requirement of the code with 63% brick and the stone elements overall. The project will provide a transitional use from the office and commercial uses on Canton Center to single-family neighborhood to the west, which is less intense than what could have been developed under the permitted commercial uses in the C2 district. The site plan is consistent with plan development agreement and meets all applicable requirements of the zoning court code. Are there any board questions or comments? Go ahead, Emory. This one just went through the Planning Commission quickly because we had seen this several times already, so we didn't have a lot of questions. Something different we're doing tonight, or is, is it a different step? Uh, no, just the final step in the planning process. So next, the applicant uh, will work through our, our engineering and uh, building permitting processes, and obviously all the processes uh, with Wayne County and the state. Yeah, go ahead, Diane, yeah. please. Mm -hmm. Just, um, is, is there a sidewalk there now, or, or will they be putting one in um, running along Canton Center Road? I don't believe there's a sidewalk on the site, is there? Oh, okay, there oh, is. there is one? Yep. Okay, all right, thank you. The parcel's currently vacant, and it's the parcel just south of Fraser Bikes. No further board questions or comments. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Very good. No second motion here. Uh, moving on to item G5. Uh, thank you, Mr. Revy, again. Mm -hmm. G item G5 is consider approval of the site plan for Northgate Apartments. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution. Whereas the project sponsor has requested approval of the site plan for Northgate Apartments located on the north side of Copernick Road, east of Haggerty Road, and... Whereas the Planning Commission reviewed the site plan and made a recommendation to approve the request as it is consistent with the conditional rezoning statement of conditions and standards for site plan approval. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Charter, Town Charter Township of Canton, Michigan, does hereby approve the site plan for Northgate Apartments located at the tax parcel numbers listed, subject to any and all applicable state and local development regulations. Second. It, the project sponsor proposes, and I see Mr. Berry is in the audience with us uh, today, as well as uh, engineering firm uh, representative, Mr. Evan Priest. Um, good evening, gentlemen. The proposed sponsor proposes an apartment complex consisting of 90 units to be located on the north side of Copernick Road adjacent to I-275 Expressway. A conditional zoning approval was granted by the Board of Trustees at their meeting October 10th, 2017, containing provisions proposed by the applicant to develop this property as multifamily residential. Provisions included a 25-foot non-disturbed buffer adjacent to Holiday Park subdivision and the inclusion of an eight-foot walking path for use by residents and connecting to the trail along I-275. The plan conforms to the requirements of zoning ordinance for multifamily housing and is approved, uh, has the approved statement of conditions 
which was also in your package, I believe. Any board questions, comments, please, Henry? As everybody remembers, this was the one that was along the trains, and that issue's been resolved. I don't know, Director Meyer, have we had any other uh, complaints about the trains, or has that been quiet? We, we had some complaints roughly three, four weeks ago. Um, in talking with CSX, there was a change in routes that caused those complaints. Uh, they assured me that that has been corrected, and since that time, we haven't had any additional complaints. So. Um, the complaints were isolated to a two or three day period when that route was changed and there was a communication breakdown with CSX and their customers. But mostly they've been moving the trains then off the roads then like they said they would. CSX has been very responsive. Good. So that was the, the big rebead there, but also, you know, so that's good and they were talking about connecting to the trail and the 25 foot buffer, so we approved that in the planning commission also. David? Um, and just to add to that, in reading through the um, Planning Commission minutes, I noticed that Chairman Green had uh, made some suggestions, and so I emailed uh, Director Foss today, who um, contacted Mr. Vary, and he said that those suggestions are going to be adopted, so I appreciate that, and that you're still looking into whether MDOT will let us do a second connection of the path further north to uh, the trail, which would be nice, so you don't have to backtrack if you're enjoying the new neighborhood, so thanks. Very, does that adequately represent the, the, okay, thank you very much. I appreciate the quick feedback. All right. Seeing no other uh, board comments, questions at this time. Uh, those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G6. Consider reapproval of preliminary site plan and approval of final site plan for Westbury the state's site condominium. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution. Whereas the project sponsor, Pulte Homes, has requested reapproval of the preliminary site plan and approval of the final site plan for Westbury Estates site condominium located on the south side of Joy Road and west side of Beck Road on uh, the tax parcels listed, and whereas the planning commission reviewed the site plan and made a recommendation to approve the request for preliminary and final site plan approval uh, as the plans are consistent with the original approval and the planned development agreement. Now therefore be it resolved that the uh, Board of T Trustees for the Charter Township of Canton, Michigan does hereby approve the request of the petitioner to reapprove the preliminary and approve the final site plan for Westbury Estates site condominiums on the tax parcels listed subject to any and all applicable state and local development regulations. Good. The project sponsor, and I see um, Mr. Score is in the audience this evening uh, representing Pulte Homes. Uh, the project sponsor is proposing a 30 unit single family residential development on 30.49 acres located south of Joy Road, west of Beck Road. The minimum lot size is 18,000 square foot over 13 acres or 40% of the land is maintained in an open space area and much of that area is being replanted with trees to reestablish a wooded area. Access is from Joy Road, which eliminates uh, turning movements, issues on Beck Road across from the high school entrance area. Pulte Homes is purchasing the development rights for this project uh, from the original applicant. Are there any board questions or comments? So there's just, oh, sorry, there's just going to be uh, en one entrance into and out of off of Joy. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And I have to assume a fire truck can get into and out of that uh, entrance. What was the, I'm sorry, what was the question? I, I have to assume a fire truck can get into and out of, it's wide enough for them. That's to correct. I believe this was the piece of property that the school district used to own, is that right? No, that, that's a, a couple hundred yards to the west. Oh, further uh, west. That's also a Pulte development. We were very successful. We just, we just essentially sold it out in the last three to four months. Oh, it's already developed. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's I thought it was sold. closer to the, I thought this was the one, okay. This is on the corner. No further board questions. Uh, those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G7. 
consider award of contract for 2018 tree removal and pruning project to Owen Tree Service, Inc. Supervisor, I move to award a contract for a 2018 tree removal and pruning project to Owen Tree Service, Incorporated, uh, for a total amount not to exceed $36,500, and to renew a contract for a second year at a 5% increase for an amount not to exceed $38,325 under a separate purchase order in 2019. Second. Okay. Uh, this is our agreement for the 2018 removal and pruning, pru uh, removal and pruning projects uh, for maintenance of trees on all of our major roads as well as on a Canton property. Um, are there any board questions or comments? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G8. Consider approval of annual maintenance and technical support agreement for CityWorks Asset Management Software. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve payment of the annual software maintenance and technical support agreement for CityWorks from Azteca Systems Incorporated, 11075 South State Street, Suite 24, uh, and in Sandy, Utah, 84070, and approve a purchase order for uh, not to for an amount not to exceed uh, $80,000. I'll support it. All right. Uh, this is Canton Township's effort to more effectively automate information processing. Municipal Services incorporated the use of CityWorks asset management software in 2007. This GIS-centric software is used to record and process service requests from residents, business, and staff, as well as to track labor, material, and equipment costs on work orders associated with maintaining our over $300 million worth of water distribution and sanitary sewer collection systems, and to me that number seems low for $300 million. Uh, as well as stormwater and fleet assets within the community. Public Works is requesting approval of the annual maintenance and technical support for CityWorks software application, as stated in the package. Any board comments or questions? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G9. Consider increase to PO number 2018-14-13 for Brico Excavating Company LLC to complete the Michigan Avenue water main replacement project. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve an increase in the said PO by $185,937 for Brico Excavating Company LLC for payment of completed restoration work and the replacement of an existing section of water main along Michigan Avenue. In response to Mr. Miller's question, the 2017 Water System Capital Improvement Program was advertised in the April 2017 and all the work has been awarded to Brico LLC. The project included replacement of 2,220 feet of six inch water main along Michigan Avenue west of Beck. While constructing this portion of the project, the contractor and the township discovered there's an additional 600 feet of six inch water main that needed to be replaced as it's also undersized. The cost of the extra work is 133,897 plus a contingency totaling 160,676.40. There's also an additional 84,863 uh, dedicated to the restoration of the work that has not been paid yet. A total of 59603 still remains unspent in the original purchase order. Therefore, Engineering Services is requesting the additional 185937 to be added to the purchase order. This includes paying for the additional restoration work as well as a contingency on the proposed additional water main replacement work. The board should also be aware there's an additional site restoration work that has been completed that has not been paid for. This is because the financial responsibility for these quantities needed uh, has to be settled out between the township and the contractor. Once those quantities are settled, engineering services will present the information to the board for approval and final payment. Are there any board questions or comments? Go ahead, Emory. So, oh, are there a lot of pipes that are undersized that we know of like this? Not very many. Uh, the majority are actually along Michigan Avenue. Um, there was a section here that 
based on our records in our geographic information system, it was uh, depicted as, a, as an existing eight inch pipe. Uh, but <clears throat> once the contractor got on site, excavated it, uh, realized that it was also a six inch and uh, six inch doesn't meet the minimum requirements for fire flow. So it needs to be upgraded to, uh, to an eight inch or larger pipe. Was the reason they were doing the original replacement is because the six inch, they thought the previous parcel was six inch and it didn't meet the requirements? That's correct. Based on the water master plan that was done five years ago, it was identified as uh, one of the priority projects for upgrading in order to meet that uh, fire flow requirement in the, uh, in the code. How many more pipes are six inch throughout Can? Not too many. Uh, we do have some older ones generally along Michigan Avenue in the industrial areas and uh, We'll just tackle those uh, over time as uh, some of the uh, what would be kind of lesser priorities in the uh, overall capital improvement uh, program. Does it not meet the f fire flow because we're build building more out west or? There's just the just diameter of the pipe back in the you know, 50s and 60s when these pipes were put in, uh, six inch was considered an acceptable standard. The codes have changed since that time, so a larger pipe is uh, now required in order to meet the flow. No additional board comment or question. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G10, consider approval of budget amendment and approval for purchase of replacement KIP scanner for Municipal Services Department. This will be in the form of two motions. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve a budget amendment to the general fund engineering services uh, budget by increasing the expense, increasing expense to the capital outlay computers account of $15,382 and increasing revenue to the fund balance appropriation account 15, for $15,382. The current KIP scanner is over 10 years old and is due for replacement. Bids were advertised publicly in March and three bids were received on March 15, 2018. Based on the analysis of the bids, ARC Document Solutions of Clawson, Michigan is recommended as the vendor for the purchase of the KIP scanner in the amount of, as stated. The scanner will serve a, quit, a critical role over the next 10 years as various divisions work on scanning most of their paper records in, into the on-base software system. ARC Document Solutions is the vendor to the township currently using the scan and building plans. So we are, I'm sorry, let me restate that. Arc Document Solutions is the vendor that the township is currently using to scan the building plans. So there is a benefit to end savings in having the same company configure the new hardware with the on-base software. A budget amendment is also necessary um, as stated. Please, Michael. What is gonna to happen to the, pre, to the older kit machine? I just leaned over to the public safety director and said, uh, we might want to talk about uh, possibly repurposing it for uh, the remaining useful life. You know, they might be able to squeeze a couple more years out of it, um, and public safety may have some, some use for that in uh, their operation. Help you scan, we hope. So just a quick question. Is 10 years about the lifespan? It sounds like you might get a couple more years out, but 10 years is pretty much. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's this is a very large unit. That's why I'm showing the picture. This thing is like almost six feet wide. It stands about five feet tall. It's a high production scanning unit. Um, and 10 years, uh, it's really at about the end of its useful life right now. Go ahead, and yeah. Mike. Is there a reason, I know Toshiba is less from the bids and you're saying they want to use it because they've been using the current one, but is there a reason, is it that much different to use a Toshiba? Yeah, you know, um, this, is al this unit is already functioning with our on-base software and it's functioning well, um, you know, to try to affect those, the, the small amount of savings over a 10 year period, we just feel uh, more comfortable uh, sticking with the, the same brand of equipment that we've been using. Uh, this is actually the second KIP. We had one prior to this, um, and it was replaced at about the 10 or 12 year mark. So um, if the board authorizes uh, this one, then this will be the third uh, KIP unit that we would have uh, purchased over time. So uh, our preference is to stick with uh, the existing uh, vendor. We believe it's really you know in the best interest of the township to do that. 
Go ahead, Mike. Uh, this would be attached to the network, correct? Yeah, it is on the network, and it's used to scan uh, all the different uh, drawings that we get in from uh, the various projects that we're not receiving electronically. Well, if this does go through, I would love to have printable access to it for my uh, precinct maps. I'm just going to put that out there. Sure, we could help you. <laughs> it, it will also print, just kind of FYI. It will, it's also yeah. a printer, but uh, it's not a high production printer, uh, but it'll print uh, print in, I believe it's uh, color. But uh, I believe this version is uh, color. The old one was just black and white. But. Well, other comments, those in favor of the first motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries, second motion. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the purchase of a KIP or KIP 7170 scanner from ARC Document Solutions for a cost of $15,382. Second. Those in favor of the second motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G11. Consider approval of proposal for backflow gate valve and fire sprinkler valve replacement. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the proposal for the backflow gate valve and fire sprinkler valve replacement at the Summit on the Park and Township Administration Building to Vanguard Fire and Security Systems Incorporated at 2101 Martindale Avenue, Southwest, Grand Rapids, Michigan, 49509 in the amount of $17,519.12 to be paid from the account number listed for the Community Improvement Fund, Capital Outlay Buildings and Improvements. Support. Good. During a regular scheduled inspection of township backflow prevention devices, a six inch double check backflow preventer with bypass and gate valve at the summit of the park could not pass the test regimen. Also during the series of inspections, it was observed at the township administration building that a six inch OS and Y fire sprinkler valve and a three inch domestic double check RPZ backflow assembly needed to be replaced as they could not pass the testing protocol. These valves are critical components of the water delivery and fire suppression systems for these buildings. Fire suppression system maintenance is covered under the current contract with Vanguard Fire and Security Systems. Vanguard provided the attached proposal as is as presented in your package. Are there any board questions, comments? Nicely done. Reading of that, wow, thank you. That's what happens when the creative people do connect, connect, uh, technical <laughs> ones. Thanks, Greg. Um, any additional board comments or questions? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G12. Consider authorization of bid award for 2018 bus transportation. Mr. Supervisor, I move to award the 2018 bus transportation services to first student at 1717 Park Street Suite 225, Neighborville, Illinois, uh, 60653, in the amount not to exceed $18,720 $18, from the following accounts. Oh, they're not summarized. All right, 101, as presented, and, uh, as presented in the packet for the amounts presented in the packet. Thank you, Diane. Um, the bids were solicited for summer camp bus services with two companies submitting bids. First, student and Trinity Transportation, two separate organizations. The uh, lowest bid was provided by first student at a cost of $260 per trip, and a total cost of $18,720 including a contingency for an extra, bu extra buses as required. Leisure Services is re recommending to award the bid to first student, which has satisfactorily provided transportation services for Canton in the past. Are there any board questions or comments? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item G13, consider approval of proposal for Cherry Hill Pathway Construction Engineering, I-275 to Lots Road. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, this is going to be in the form of two motions. I uh, move to approve the following budget amendments. Increase in revenue to the donations account for $10,130. 
increase in expenditures to the capital outlay for infrastructure of $13,800 and a decrease in expenditures from professional services account in the amount of $3,670. Pathway along the south side of Cherry Hill Road providing pedestrian access to Lots Road to I-275 Trail was preliminarily uh, designed by Spalding D. Decker as part of the engineering for Lots Road construction project. To complete the construction of the pathway, the engineer will need to finalize the engineering scope of services. Currently funding for the pathway of the construction has been approved as part of the 2018 Community Development Block Grant Program. In order to complete the project, the engineer will need to add their scope of services to provide bid documents and construction administration. Spalding Dedector uh, provided the proposal for the engineering scope of services and the amount presented. Are there any questions? Director Hohenberger, seeing none. Those in favor of the first motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Second motion. Supervisor, I further move to approve the proposal for Cherry Hill Pathway Construction Engineering I-275 I to the lots uh, to Spalding the Decker, 905 South Boulevard, East Rochester Hills, Michigan, 48307 in the amount of $13,800 to be paid from the account number listed. Second. Those in favor of the second motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G14, consider approval, bid award for Fire Station 1, Roof Replacement and Budget Amendment. Mr. Supervisor, I move to award the bid and the contract for the Fire Station 1 Roof Replacement to City Roofing at 604 Williams Lake Road, Waterford, Michigan, 48329, in an amount not to exceed $61,160 with funds to be paid from the account number listed, Capital Outlay Buildings and Improvements. Second. March 2018, bids were solicited uh, for the roof replacement at Fire Station 1. The lowest qualified bid was provided by City Roofing. After reviewing the bid specs and the budget, we are recommending that the reinstallation of the lighting protection system be omitted from the bid, resulting in an $18,000 reduction in costs. We are also recommending that the bid alternate of $4,500 be added to the scope of work for laminated shingles along with a $3,000 contingency. The revised total including the adjustments is $61,160. We recommend that City Roofing be awarded uh, the bid including the upgraded shingles and contingency in the amount stated. Are there any board questions, comments? Yes, go ahead, Stephen. No lightning protection system. It's okay to do. <laughs> Director Meyer might be able to better speak to that. <laughs> we, we made that decision in consultation with the fire chief and kind of what their needs were based on their current budget as well. After evaluation, there's no, um, there's no requirement in the building code to have those. Um, and, and the research that we did that really doesn't justify the need for it at that expense. Those in favor of the first motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Second motion. I further move to approve the following budget amendment for the design of the fire station roof. An increase in expenditures to the capital improvement buildings and improvements fund of $7,700 and a decrease expenditures um, of transfer to fund balance of $7,700. Thanks, Diane. This is uh, one or two. This is... Oh, I'm sorry. Are those in favor of the second motion as presented? Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G15. Uh, consider approval of bid award for Pheasant Run Golf Club roof replacement. Mr. Supervisor, I move to award the uh, bid and the contract for the Pheasant Run Golf Club roof replacement to Reasonable Roofing at 1728 Michigan. Port Huron, Michigan, 48060 for $65,185 with funds to be paid from the account number listed for capital outlay buildings and improvements. Port. Pheasant Run Golf Club was built in 1997. The shingles of the clubhouse are the original on the building and have received several repairs due to failing conditions. 
as well as blown off shingles. The roof is in poor condition and has passed its useful life and is documented by Roofing Technology Associates uh, during the roof inspection. In March 2018, bid specifications were designed for the replacement of the shingles and the clubhouse and a bid alternate available for installation of premium shingles. The following companies did submit the bids as stated and we are going with reasonable roofing if the board approves this item. Go ahead, Emory. So why reasonable roofing? I mean, that's a low bid compared to the others. Is there a reason why it's so different than the others? Like 20 to 30,000? Yes, they made an error in their <laughs> bid, but we contacted them and gave them the opportunity to withdraw, and they submitted in writing that they will honor their bid price. So what does the bid plus alternate mean then? So that's a, an upgraded shingle that has a, a little nicer look, a heavier weight, and a longer warranty with it. They're, they're a lot lower than everybody else. Okay. Yes, and, and we have a, um, a roofing consultant that developed the bid specs and they verified everything with the company and they will also be doing inspections during the installation as well to make sure everything gets installed properly that they're not cutting corners to meet that price. Or using substandard roof shingles or anything? Okay. Yes. Yep. So that'll all be inspected by a third party consultant that specializes in roofs. So. Request uh, mistakes in all future bid requests? As part <laughs> we could request process. it. <laughs> Require, I should say. <laughs> Require. Go ahead, Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, how does this fit in with the capital improvement plan that we're pulling together? So I guess my question is if we're going to be doing the pheasant run, uh, and we are definitely doing the, um, what we just approved, the fire station one roof, um, how does this factor in if, if there's additional costs? Are we working with the capital improvement plan as we pull it together to make sure that we're not, uh, that we're being as most efficient when, you know, if we're getting up there, are we addressing <coughs> Yeah, we've Over actually there. done a, a prior to um, a, a few years ago, we had a, a roofing consultant do a full roofing inventory and prioritize those. So we're kind of going in order based on the, the life of the roofs to, to prioritize those and see which ones need to be fixed first. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item G16, consider approval of bid award for summit Senior Center, Renovation and Approval of Budget Amendment. In form of two motions. Mr. Supervisor, I move to award the bid and the contract for the Summit Senior Center Renovation to Cross Renovation Incorporated at 34133 Schoolcraft Road in Livonia, Michigan, 48150 in the amount of $64,777 to be paid from the account number listed for capital outlay office equipment. On uh, February 23rd, 2016, I'm kind of jumping down in the summary here. The board approved plan development district with Pulte Homes for Grandview Estates, and as part of that agreement, Pulte provided a donation of $100,000 to Canton Leisure Services as a community benefit. Of that original sum, 18,000 is still available in the account for use in this project. We're requesting that the remaining $1,527 be transferred to the account <coughs> identified. Um, also, in terms of background information, <coughs> Summit on the Park is the anchor Canton Township rec Recreation Facilities portfolio. Each year, 600,000 people attend events, classes, banquets, and other activities in this 90,000 square foot community center. A very key element of a facility is obviously the Senior Center. The Senior Center is the original to the Summit on the Park, which was built in 96. Since that time, the room design has remained unchanged over the years, and the center has grown in popularity and now needed of the much needed renovations. So with that being said, we've got this item for you this evening to consider. Are there any board questions, comments? Go ahead, Stephen. Someone who in the next few years might be next allowed year. to, hey, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Step oh. foot into this space. Is there anything unique or new, or Oops. in terms of changes that you're making? Do you know? Yeah, absolutely. the The biggest thing, and we were going to pull up some photos. Unfortunately, the internet has uh, 
died out on us here, so I, I can email you the photos and okay. the renderings. Um, but it'll the as you walk into the Club 55 now and you look to the left, there's a small kitchenette area and a bathroom. We're actually going to knock out that entire area. We won't have a restroom there anymore, but there's restrooms right across the hall with ADA access there. Um, and it'll be a much larger kitchenette area and a redo of the front desk area. So it'll be a little bit uh, more user friendly in that. So there'll be a much larger coffee area and refrigerators and sinks and those sorts of things to make it a little bit more welcoming. Look forward to it. So when they did these bids, did they create the design and then they bid on it? Or you guys had a design in mind and they bid on that? We had a design, we had it designed last year by TMP. Yes. You had a question? Well, I, was, I, I know uh, we sit on the senior road, Isley's one. You, you don't want to go messing with seniors and designing things. <laughs> I mean, they are one tough group, and I know there's a lot of input from the seniors who are going to be using that facility as to what they wanted, what they thought would be appropriate, and it was a good match between the township and the senior community to design this facility. I think it'll, it looks very good. It'll, it'll be well-received been very excited about this they've been talking about it quite a bit so it will certainly be a nice upgrade to the area go ahead Diane, right? mm -hmm. there's also a big variation in the bids here is there do you know why I mean like from 60,000 to 128,000 uh, most of them no not really <laughs> can't really explain the higher ends there's there's enough especially at the low end to, to justify that those are close enough in there. You have the kind of the one outlier, 128,000, but nothing that stood out as a, as a concern for us. Okay, so you'll just be watching the material there too, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks. Good, those in favor of the motion as presented, state aye. 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 Motion carries, and there is a second motion here. Correct. Mr. Supervisor, I further move to approve the following budget amendments. An increase in revenues to the uh, donations account for $19,777 and increased expenditures to the capital outlay office equipment account for the same amount, $19,777. Good. Those in favor of the second motion as presented, please state aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item G17, consider approval of bid award for summit carpet replacement. Mr. Supervisor, I move to award the bid and the contract for Summit Hall's carpet replacement to the Sealy Group Limited, 1411 Lake Lansing Road in Lansing, Michigan, 48912, in the amount of $36,624.48 to be paid out of the capital outlay building improvement fund account listed. Second. Okay, um, for everybody who goes to the summit, the carpet needs to be replaced. That's what this item is. Are there any board questions or comments? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a second motion or are we good with one here? Very good. G18. Uh, consider approval for welcome sign replacement and budget amendment. All right, Mr. Supervisor, I move, this is the form of two motions. I move to approve a $7,498 budget amendment to the Community Improvement Fund account number listed for capital outlay land improvements as follows. Increase in revenues to the insurance uh, settlement fund for $7,498 and increase in expenditures capital outlay land improvement for $7,498. Second. Good. On uh, December 27, 2017, a vehicle struck the, east, uh, the eastbound Michigan Avenue Center Medium. Welcome to Canton Sign. Uh, we've been working with our insurance company as well as uh, contractors, Spectrum Signs and Design, who are currently un con under contract for the sign design and installation. Uh, they were contacted to design the replaced uh, damaged sign, and this is the presentation to approve the, that replacement. Are there any questions? Get any money from the guy to hit the sign? Well, actually, I was at the overheard the conversation, but uh, yes, uh, the dollars flowed from the guy who hit the sign to MMRA, our insurance carrier broker, and then we still have to pay uh, the thousand dollar deductible. I believe is correct. No, they're shaking their heads. 
please, okay, correct me. They're, the driver's insurance company pays the deductible in this Beautiful. case. Nice. Anyone hurt? What was all right? Do we know? Don't know. My feelings for the last four months coming into that side of Canton, not having a welcome to Canton sign. Not being welcomed. <laughs> <laughs> well, this will repair those for you. There you go. All right. Go ahead, Michael. Just in case there's any accounting enthusiasts at home or anybody following along with the board packet in the back, uh, I did not misspeak. I, um, I did choose the word, you know, the board packet says it, would, it was $7,489. It was supposed to be $7,498, so that was what I said aloud. It will look different in the packet. It will appear correct in the board minutes. Those in favor of the first motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Second motion. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the proposal from Spectrum Signs and Signs and designs at 3001 South Gully Road, Suite D in Dearborn, Michigan, 48124 to replace the eastbound Michigan Avenue. Welcome to Canton Sign in the amount of $7,498 to be paid out of the Community Improvement Fund uh, general government account listed. Or favor of the second motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G19, first reading of the addition of Chapter 2, Article 5, to Canton Township Code of Ordinances entitled Code of Ethics, Sections 2-225 through 2-251. Mr. Supervisor, I move to introduce and hold the first reading establishing Canton Township Code of Ordinances, Chapter 2, Article 5, entitled Code of Ethics, Sections 2-225 two through 2-251. Two through two Support. On April 4, 2017, in a study session dedicated to the review of ethics policy, the board established an ad hoc ethics committee uh, by myself with the appointment of Clerk Segrist, uh, Trustee Anthony, and Trustee Graham Hudek. The committee reviewed the existing policy material from the Michigan Townships Association, Michigan Municipal League, the Attorney General's Office, and the benchmark communities to identify best practices and make a recommendation. The draft ordinances were edited by Corporate Council, Human Resources, Finance Department to ensure they conform to existing regulations and requirements. The board reviewed the proposed policy, made the recommendation at the study session of February 20th, 2018. Board of Ethics would be established to hear complaints against representatives of the Charter Township of Canton when there is a reasonable basis to believe that the respondent has violated this ordinance to refer to those complaints for prosecution and or disciplinary hearing by appointing authority. The ordinance provides for penalties for violation of this ordinance. Uh, the ordinance would be reviewed annually. And Clerk Segrist, as you led the committee, is there anything additional you would like to add? Uh, just so if you look, um you know, we had left this discussion at the last study session um, that there were some additions. We had kind of, I got head nods about what people were comfortable with and what they weren't. And so if you, you will see the final draft is attached, which will be a clean read through. And then there's the red line version, which is a misnomer. There's actually no red coloring in there, uh, but that would have any change. Uh, that is, that has the ordinance um, as you last saw it with um, the striking out of sections and the addition of certain sections. And um, anything that is added is, is bold and in, is italicized and anything to be removed has a line through it. Um, rep met with Corporation Council, was comfortable adding contractors under this, agree under this ordinance, provided that they control township um, property and um, just basically it, it should be a recommend you know and then once I had made that change I passed it to the ethics subcommittee to make sure this was the change we had discussed at the study session uh, as a group and that my my alterations were correct um, and then once I got the go-ahead from both my committee members to my right I um, I then put it on for a for a first read 
Thank you, Michael, for your effort, as well as Trustee Anthony and Graham Hudek. Uh, well done. The, this now will, once enacted, will replace the current policy with a formal ordinance. Very good. Uh, those, any questions, comments, additional? How, do we know how long it's been since this has been updated? Chris, it's gone, so probably not. Sorry. The, but the, the last time this was updated? Well, so keep in mind, this is a different creature of law, right? So the first incidence was a policy. Uh, oh, okay. This would be an ordinance. So this has the force of law, and it does have, um, it creates a civil misdemeanor for violation of it. So it is um, to be treated as such. But the policy was enacted by in 2009 and um, had not been updated since 2009. Thank you. Welcome. I had a great team. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. And that's one, one reading there. One motion, correct? Yep. Uh, last item, G20, award CDBG housing rehabilitation contracts. All right. And this is a first that I can remember, Mr. Supervisor, I have one, two, three, four, five motions. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, I move to award the contract for a housing rehabilitation at a forced trail to Stratton Home Improvement in the amount of $25,000. Yes. But um, in terms of summary, under Canton's Affordable Housing Pro Program, Federal dollars are used to pay for major and minor repairs to owner-occupied single-family homes in Canton. The participating families must meet HUD income requirements. Formal bid procedures were followed and the public bid opening was held on March 1st, 2018. The CDBG, the CDBG Housing Rehabilitation Program the bids resulted in the projects ready for board approval are attached. Only one company submitted complete bids for the, all five projects. The Finance and Budget Department is requesting to approve the contracts for multiple HUD CDBG funded home rehabilitation projects with Stratton as stated in the amount as shown. And we're gonna go through and you're gonna read each item or element as an individual. So. Are there any board questions? What this does is for the elderly, uh, low income members of our, our community, uh, they're provided with an opportunity to apply for and receive help. And that's what we're doing here to, to bring their homes up to, up to snuff. Any additional, uh, go ahead, Michael. I just have a question. Um, I was curious to the, the numerical address portion of the first motion is uh, X'd out. Is, what, is, what would typically be the reason for that? Um, privacy of the homeowner. A lot of these homeowners live, you know, next to um, people. Like, they could live next to somebody who is affluent, and you just didn't uh -huh. want to point out. And the, the mobile home parks, typically most people qualify in the mobile home parks. Um, that's traditionally where we get a lot of our requests from. So it's, uh, we had a request a few years ago from somebody who... I, I think maybe wasn't real comfortable with everybody, their neighbors knowing that they were getting grant dollars, so we were trying to protect privacy of the homeowners. And each of these bid packages are available in your office for Absolutely. review if anybody would like to do that. Go ahead, Amory. The reason why the other, I mean, we had two bidders, but only one of them bid on only one of the addresses. Is there a reason that they would just do one and not the whole, all of them? Like Typically, they, they're not making a lot of money on these smaller projects, only on the larger ones, they're gonna make money on it. So we typically don't get a lot, plus they have to be familiar with the grant rules and they have to um, track how much they're paying their employees to do the work. They have, you know, Davis-Bacon requirements, so they have a prevailing wage rate requirement. It, it's a lot of work um, to do, so a lot of companies don't even wanna bid on it. Stratton Home um, has been a reliable company. The other problem that we have had when we get some new companies in here who want to do the work. Um, not only do we have to be satisfied, but the homeowners have to be satisfied as well. And we get a lot of complaints after some work is done if it's not up to a certain quality. So the Stratton Home has been um, a bidder who has come back and our community, the residents have been happy with the work that they have performed as well. Um, 
So it's kind of been a win-win for us at this point in time as far as Stratton has been a reliable um, provider of the service. The residents have been happy for the most part. And, um, and it's hard to even get people to respond, especially for the mobile homes for the $5,000. They're not making a lot of money on a $5,000 project. Seeing no other comments or questions, those in favor of the first motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries, second motion. Supervisor, I move to award the uh, contract for housing rehabilitation at 39500 Warren Road, the lot on Elm, to Stratton Home Improvements in the amount of 5000 Second. Those in favor of the second motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries, third motion. Supervisor, I move to award the contract for a housing rehabilitation at 39500 Warren Road for the lot on Fern to Stratton Home Improvement for the amount of $5,000. Second. Those in favor of the third motion is presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries, fourth motion. Supervisor, I move to award the contract for a housing rehabilitation at 39500 Warren Road for the lot on Hickory to Stratton Home Improvements in the amount of $5,000. Second. Those in favor of the fourth motion is presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries, uh, fifth motion. Finally, Mr. Supervisor, I move to award the contract for a housing rehabilitation at 39500 Warren Road to the lot on Oak to Stratton Home Improvements in the amount of $5,000. Thank you, Diane. Uh, those in favor of the fifth motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Um, that now concludes our formal agenda for this evening. Are there any additional public comments? Yes, Christine, now would be the time to make additional public comments. Make a suggestion. Um, I've worked on agenda for the Wayne County Airport Authority. I've also attended Wayne County board meetings. And normally um, on their agenda, there's a little brief description of the item. And there's also a dollar figure attached to each item. Um, can be very short, but I think that would be beneficial to the attendees to have a little more information on the items. Thank you. Make a note of that, uh, Clerk Sigrist, if you could, so we don't lose it. Um, is there any uh, staff comment? Any staff comment? Seeing none, uh, board comment. Go ahead, please. So yesterday was the first day that we had nine people up here. It was cozy, but it actually worked real well. I mean, it, for the meeting went rather smoothly. I think in the last agenda item, we had a, a really full conversation. I think it was good. I know having all those people, it was the conversation that we had, I think was the fullest that we've had in a long time. For the public, you're talking about planning commission. The planning commission, you're right, the planning commission. So we moved from seven members to nine members. And it's, yeah. We just need two more microphones and glasses. We are sharing microphones and cups up here. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it did go well. Was the last item the one that went 5 4 vote? Yes. It was a oh, 5 wow. 4. I was now it's got texted in the middle of the night, so. Exciting, yeah. Okay, very good. Um, it was very exciting. There you go. You got to start coming to planning commissions. <laughs> Fun. All right. Um, I think that concludes our formal agenda for this evening. Um, call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Those in favor to adjourn, state aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Good night, everyone.